What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the RTG Career Mode, it's episode number 36, loads to get through today as we're going to play through the entirety of the January transfer window uh, and also have both legs, the Carrot got semi against West Ham, the FA got fourth round against Bolton and more big games in the league as well. Uh, just before we get to though, uh, we've got two youth player unsettled emails which in a way I'm glad to come now, to be honest. Agustin Osorio, that's the Argentine uh, winger who looks very good indeed. And also uh, Edwards, that American goalkeeper, already 73 rated at 18 years old. And the reason I'm glad to come now is because we mentioned in the summer, the January window is right around the corner. So we can add him straight to the loan list. And we'll check the potential first, where Nicholas is an exciting prospect, and I think Osorio will be as well, to be fair. No, that's just showing great potential, but it's still pretty solid. Uh, right, with loads of games squeezing today, we'll dive right into our first one. Uh, it is Tottenham Hotspur away in North London, right now topping the table and going for their first ever Premier League title. Big game to start off with, and coming to the conclusion of it, we'll be officially halfway through coming to ones. Terrible first half, there's actually nothing going on, still tied at 0-0. These are the, uh, the league leaders, we are away so it does make sense. And obviously this season we've been better away than we have been at home as Jordan Boss slides through. Keep going, keep going. There we go, dragged Wan with Saka out now, just got to play this right here. There'll be a man in the middle. Oh man, what a last ditch tackle that was. Coates was about to blast it home, what a tackle. I don't normally include defensive highlights, but that was uh, pretty pretty amazing. I mean, it was goal saving. Jordan's first pass deflected, but the second one worked back in. Look at this here. That is that is literally in the nick of time to stop Koya from belting it home. That's a, that's an, that is goal saving. That Whitaker to Yusuf, and now Koita. Ended the first half strong, start the second half off in front. Koita with all the time in the world, they just left him and he wasn't going to mess up the one-on-one. -on -one. Gave him the nod ahead of Archer due to Cam's inconsistency this year and Koita bends home the opener. Swans in front. Poor game, all things considered, but don't you just love it when you're a weaker team going away against one of the best in the league and they cannot break you down. Like you literally just shut the door on them in their own backyard. It feels it feels brilliant. Like it really, really does. And right now, whilst they've had a lot of the ball and they've had a high pass accuracy, they've literally not had a single chance. The, the DM duo of Gomez and Yusuf have been strong. Flamingo and Shulman have been great at the back. But the one chance they get results in a goal. Absolutely typical. James Madison. Rejected Looney Tunes, this time for Mighty Tottenham, didn't want to play with Botman. Every time I see Madison now, that song pops in my head. Come on, that is so frustrating. I defended brilliantly up until then. Yeah, it's tough to take that. Defended really well for the game. Unfortunately, lost the win right at the end. I'll take the point now. Would have taken the pre-game, I'll take it now. If you haven't seen that James Madison song, by the way, it's 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 genuinely good. Like I, I'm, not, I, I'm not even joking. Like, I'm not even capping it. It's genuinely a good song. <laughs> And I think the bloke that sung it as well was uh, was doing it ironically, so it's uh, it's fine to laugh. I'll leave a link to it. Anyway, uh, trans windows here, less than three mil to work with in the window. We're, we're going to do absolutely nothing whatsoever. I want I want to load. Oh, cool, getting back to Argentina. We're going to load. We're going to try and loan out those two youth players. But other than that, I've got absolutely no plans whatsoever. Academy's looking strong. I still might give a couple of deals here for Traore, Samras, and possibly Saka as they're all 18 years old. And they should theoretically ask for a pro deal at some point, especially Theo. Um, but the rest, however, I think I'll, uh, I'll leave in the U team for now. And as we take a look at the league table at the official halfway stage as well, that draw does keep Spurs top, but only by two points. We're three points behind in third with uh, Bryson in fourth. Just like last season, a really congested race for European places. I mean, nine points are separating first to ninth, so it's an incredibly, incredibly congested table. But stark improvement on last year, no doubt about that. 11 wins in 19. It's It's been much better. Again, uh, Scoring goals is still our problem, but the results are the most important thing. Top four, I'll take that coming in the, the season. There's Erling Haaland, looks to win the Golden Boot once more. 13 goals in 19, just clear of Martinelli and Evan Nilsson. Uh, Kanunen is our top scorer this year of 8 in 19. Archer, uh, one goal behind him this year. As for the assist race, it is Silva uh, leading the way for West Ham. That's Fabio Silva, by the way. Uh, with Jude Bellingham uh, level on assists as well. We've also got Kanunen in 11th there with 4 in 19. And Sinisteri's also got a hand uh, with 3. 
And as the race the Golden Glove, Kyle looking to retain it once again, 9 in 19. And this is why we're in the top four right now. Scoring goals, yeah, not doing a lot of that. But defending, really solid. And as for the Champions League, well, if we stay where we are, we'll be in it next season. Uh, here's a quick look at the groups here. Uh, as you can take a look at some, which are very strong indeed, including Group E there. And um, yeah, oh, look at that group page. Arsenal into Bayern and Fenerbahce. That's a nice group of death there. And uh, Arsenal and Inter were the ones that made it through in the end. Right, following game, Bournemouth at home in what has been a really inconsistent run, aiming to bounce back here with a victory. Come on, you swans. Once again, another game where I'm struggling to create that many chances, but one of my uh, favourite sayings, you can have anything you want, but you can't have everything you want. If we were to um, start scoring more, we'd probably be giving up a lot more chances. So, yeah, like the... Oh, this can goes down. Truth is, we're not scoring that many goals, but at least we're not conceding many either. Hence, while we're in third place right now, and as Cam goes down there, I do suspect that will be longer than just a five-day bruise as Matthias Cunha is dispossessed by Flamingo tracking back. Yeah, it's definitely going to be more than five days that for, for Archer. That. And this has been, even though we are right now into the last 16 in the Europa League, into the Carabao Cup semis, and in the top four. This has still been a very difficult season. But this is what's making Ultimate so good. Even when you're winning, it's still incredibly tough. As Kanunen fires just wide. Man, oh man. Another game where I failed to score. We've got no money to bring a new forward in in this January window. But I do wonder if changing the tactics might be an idea. Because I'm just, I'm really struggling to score right now. The thing is though, and I say this a lot. Like if you're, if you're getting results, if you're performing above expectations, um... You, sh you shouldn't really need to change anything, you know? Like, how about was the injury for Cam? Oh, man, that makes it even harder. Cam, our top scorer of the past three years, going down for three months. And whilst, again, this season, he has been a bit inconsistent. It's still a big blow there. Seven goals in, in 15, eight in 17. To be fair, it's, it's basically the same ratio as Koita, really, just in a few more games. But... Um, yeah, the thing is, if, if, we, if, you, if you're doing fine, you don't need to change things. Like, right now, we're still in the top four. So, why would we uh, why, why would we change what's working? If you were to give me top four coming to start of the season, I would have taken it. That's where we are right now, so why change things? Right, sorry, lots of sort out here. Uh, Innocent Bamber is back from his loan spell at uh, Real Salt Lake. Lovely stuff. Uh, Defender agreed terms for... Uh, Osorio, so we'll quickly negotiate that there as well and leave the Atalanta United deal just for now in case this one falls through. And who was the Nicholas Edwards deal from? Was it Brighton? I don't think he's going to play there. I need, I need to send him somewhere where he'll be first choice. Yeah, Brighton have got merit, so he's not going to play there. 11 ratings lower. And look at Scott Clark, man. Five clean sheets and 15 at Wolves, including one against us. He's their first choice, and that's his growing two ratings. So I'm going to turn that down and uh, wait until we can get him somewhere I know. He'll, uh, he'll be a first-choice goalkeeper. However, I do think he'll be first-choice here in Brentford. Used to them only having one goalkeeper in their squad. So we'll try and loan him there to West London. Right, following game, FA Cup third round. Bolton right now in the Championship. Away from home at the Macron. Not sure it's called that now, but away in Bolton regardless. Let's look for a safe passage into the fourth round against the now Championship side. Come on, you swans. I get asked for RTG suggestions in the Football League a lot. And to be honest, there's so many teams. It's hard to just pick one, but Bolton won. Wanderers would be an amazing, amazing team to, uh, to to build and develop over the years because they, you know, they, they were a team who back in the days of the uh, the early and the mid noughties they were a Premier League staple. They got to the Europa League. Um, they uh, they uh, they had uh, some amazing players in their side, such as JJ Okocha, so good they named him twice. Johan Elmander, he was a really solid striker. As Butland makes a good save there. Uh, Nicholas and Nelka as well. I mean, they, they had a, they had a really solid team. With Yasko Lina between the sticks as well. As Butland again bails me out and then pounces on the loose ball. Um, but of course, in, in more recent years, dropping to the championship and then going into real financial difficulty, entered administration, dropped all the way down to the fourth tier, and it was looking quite probable that they may well end up going out of existence. Thankfully, they didn't manage to survive, and now they're on the up, pushing for a place in, uh, in next year's championship. I highly recommend them if you're looking for a, uh, an RTG team to use in the English Football League. Then being in the Northwest as well means strong rivalries with the likes of Blackburn and Preston and when you get there the Manchester clubs as well they're a uh, they're a really really fun team to use I'd say goodness gracious back to back goalless draws in less in less 
No, back to that goal is yours. Oh my god. Oh, so we need a replay. We got one. I just can't score. I just cannot score at the moment, honestly. This is pathetic, genuinely. Right, so that's two youngsters loaned out. Uh, Osorio back to Argentina and Edwards off to Brentford. Following game, midweek. West Ham at home, first leg of the Carragher semi. Intentionally rested my boys on the weekend for this one here. So my first team are fully fit, fresh and raring to go. And for goodness sake, can I please get a goal? Following game. Got to win this first leg here to take back to London. Come on, you swans. Well, that, well, that, well, that. Thank you, Flamingo. Well, in, mate. Good ball, that. Oh, what a goal! What a goal! I thought I absolutely messed that up. But instead, it's one of the best finishes of the save. What a goal! Koita into AK. This fake shot here, I, I wanted to offload to Koita. In the end, I press circle instead. In the end, it's a it's a brilliant finish, clipping the onside of the bar. And unsurprisingly, when I need a hero to stand up out there, it's AK who delivers. 13 minutes in, it's a lucky goal, not an unlucky one. Swans take the lead courtesy of the rifle. What a brilliant, brilliant strike that was. Oh, what a bit of dribbling by Caduce and Boz. Tussling but losing the battle. Silva, oh, what a finish. Fabio Silva. Absolutely beautifully bent effort into the far corner and West Ham. But this is what I was talking about, man. You can have anything you want, but not everything you want. If you uh, if you want to be an elite defensive team, then you're not going to score many goals. If you want to be a, a good scoring team, you're going to concede a lot as well. Typical. If we score, we concede. If we don't score, we don't concede. There's Chiesa. Oh, holds off Yolmond. Oh, what a goal. And I've absolutely blew this from being a goal up. 2-1 down. This is really reminiscent to a couple of years ago in the League Cup semis when we uh, we felt quite confident. And in the end, lost the first leg at home to Leeds and then also got battered 5-0 in the second. As Kanunen hits it straight Chevalier and either side, and that's probably 2-2. Two -two. It's very, very similar. It's got the same sort of vibe to it, man. And this would be a massive missed opportunity too because both teams in the other semi are championship side. So really, I call us favourites for this competition now. If we go out here, there's a, there's a major honour which will be passed up for definite. Because whoever wins this semi should go on to win the final. And it's... Oh... It's going to be West Ham, or it would have been had Rushworth not made that save. We go 3 1 down, it's over. What a save, Carl. Well, can you chip it to Yusuf? Yes. Can you flick it through? Yes. Kanuna, can you flick it through? Yes. Koita needs to get on his left. Oh, and Chevalier, what a save, man. We, we, got it. we got to at least level the first leg. If we lose the first leg like we did two years ago, will we get, will we get battered away? I just know it. Need a goal. May I bottled it? Absolutely bottled it from a goal up to lose it 2-1. Goodness gracious. Horrendous run in form. No wins in our last four. And a defeat in the first leg of the semi. Where we have to go to London and try and win at West Ham to make the final. I'm, I'm, I'm blowing this. Absolutely blowing it. Yeah, there's a lot going wrong right now. And I'm not quite sure what the fix is. Following game, Everton away at Goodison. As we look for our first win after none in four. Come on, you swans. Oh, 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 what are you doing? Thank you very much. My goodness, what a gift. What an absolute gift. Dan James, rest starter in the league these days, fires in the opening. What was he doing there? That's a throw. That's what's worse than me, honestly. He just let me come and make the tackle and then smack it in from close range. I get playing out from the back, but sometimes, mate, <laughs> sometimes you've got to know when a hoof it. And it's another scrappy game where we're just trying to grind out a one-goal victory. As Everton push for a, uh, a late level. I've got every man behind the ball, but I need to do this. I need to do this because I can't score. So, I've just got to make sure I don't concede. Free to go. Every single man behind the ball. Constantly. 
We just farm a wall, you know? <laughs> Don't let them through. Grind it out. Yeah, went in Ethan Laird, and that is surely going to do it. Ref, come on. Come on. Goodness gracious, this speaks volumes, man. What FIFA game have you ever seen me play where I've needed to do stuff like this? Never before. As to the challenge, but my word. Right after the game, there is a bit from uh, Lecce, the Italian side for Creswell, who was a rock in that game, to be fair. But I like Charlie. If it's on a free transfer, I'd 79 overall now. And uh, I do see him taking Ron's place as Joe is now 30 and only one rating above Charlie. So I'm going to keep him and not sell him instead. Right, following game. Uh, FA Cup third round replay. Bowen at home. This should be a banker as we have a back to back wins for the first time all month long and make it through to the fourth round. Come on, Swans. He can't go out here. Man, I am not playing well in this session. I apologise, guys. I really do. Everyone's going to have a fever session like this where they're just not on it. It's Dedich. Oh, my goodness. Gets a bit of luck, but... Yeah, you have, to, you have to acknowledge when you're not playing well. And right now, I definitely can. I'm having a shocker out there. And it says a lot when this is how they would get a goal. Nathan Baxter or Scott Sterling. Scott Sterling! I oh, know, it hit his shoulder. I thought it hit his face. We'll take the little luck. But my goodness, I'm all over the place today. Yep, Flamingo will it, mate. That's nicely done, that. And Tattoo's down the right. There we go. Excellent work. Quater coming to you. Great turn. Come on! Seku, I'm going to need you, bro. I'm going to need you out there now. Cam's done for three months. So it's all on you up top, mate. Class turn and finish down. We talk about this a lot, but when you're going for a barren run, when you're going for a tough streak, when you're going for a dry spell, you need, you need an easy lay. You need a gimme, and that's exactly what this is going to be. Coiter's on side there. You need an easy lay. Swansea, freeing it up, and this is what we needed to restore our confidence. So much better. Flamingo, well in, and Sinistera to Canoonum. That's wonderful work from AK. Good first touch. Ah, oh, Sinistera has just beat him all ends up. Coitus there. I'd love to get him the hat-trick, but instead Lewis says, I'll take it myself instead to make it four. This is better. This is much, much better from the gang. Fawn it up. Fourth round incoming. Lewis to Sinistera. Canuda running in behind. He'll find him. Great first touch. Takes it on early. Oh! Anton Kanuna with a couple of beauties today. I, I prefer the first goal he scored in the West Ham game off the underside of the bar, but takes it on the chest and on the half volley. Absolutely wonderfully placed effort. Maybe Nathan Baxter could have got could have got there. But in the end he's at full stretch and doesn't even get a fingernail on it. Swans 5-0 up and about bloody time. Well, I think it's safe to say there's no one more relieved in South Wales than me right now. Awful. Absolutely awful run of form. But back-to-back -back wins and exactly what we were craving. So directly after the conclusion, as that was the replay on the Wednesday night, we should have the draw for the fourth round where Swansea will be taking on... Dun-dun-dun! Ah. Okay, one more advance, we'll find out who we're taking on. Oh, it was a Tuesday, there we go, dun dun dun. <laughs> oh dear, that sums the episode up. Leads away at Ellen Road. Tough one there, even though they're now a challenger side. And uh, flashbacks to that Carabao Cup semi at Ellen Road a couple of years ago, no doubt. And funny enough, a bid for Ethan Laird from Leeds as well. £9 million offer from Daniel Farker. But of course, we'll be turning it down. He's not getting any better now, but I I've mentioned this before, but like in, in January, if... If you can't find a replacement for a player that you could sell when a bid comes in, my recommendation is always don't sell. Hold on to him. Because if we get 9 mil, board scheme a bit off the top, it's about 7 mil. That takes our budget to, again, around 10 mil, I'd say. Possibly a little bit shy of that with wage budget considerations. Could we find as good of a right back for Dedich right now as a backup? I don't think so. Not, not right now. 
Yes, we could recall Amir, but he's growing whilst out on loan at Leeds right now. So, to me, I, I always say in January, play it safe. Unless you've got a clear plan in mind, play it safe. Right, following game. Uh, and Listen, Eric, I know that you love him as much as I do. Everyone loves him. But he's going absolutely nowhere. Following game uh, for Nottingham Ward today. Second leg of the Carrick Cup semi away at London against West Ham. We're after trailing the first leg 2-1. We must overcome the deficit to make it through to Wembley. Where the winners will face Burnley who knocked out Luton on penalties. West Ham in the Carrick Cup semi second leg. Come with you Swans. 22 minutes to go. Dropping Kanunan back so I can bring on Vasquez. Really my only, my only option on the bench I would say is... Well, swap pace for pace and bring on Dan James for Sinistera or Tattoo. Or just put Vasquez up top to hold the ball up and play players through. Like, oh, like that. That's the only thing really I can think of doing right now. When the other options are just like for like swaps, really. There's, there's still time, but not a lot of it. West Ham have done a great job of killing this contest off. And this is why, like, if you're at home in the first leg of a competition, you need to make sure you win it. Because going away from home and needing to flip a tie is an incredibly difficult thing to do, especially when it's against a really good team, as is often the case in late knockout situations. Just, you put yourself in a hole and it's very difficult to climb out of that. Vasquez! Come on! Swansea, Levin or Aggregate, Brandon to the rescue. Well, we're still going to have to win the shootout. Also not an easy thing to do when you're in a way to... Oh, when you're in a way to... Jao Gomez hustling. Oh, okay, that's going to drop to tattoo that. Jao stays down. Oh, he's hurt as well. He's hurt. He's hurt, he's hurt, which is going to stop our build-up. Gomez has been brilliant as coming in. From Wolves, that, that's a season ender. I'm almost certain that's a season ender that. that I think is going to do it as well. So Vasquez has given us a chance to be fair. It, it's all I could have asked of him and he did his job and then some. Penalties at the London Stadium to see who makes it in to the Carabao Cup final. A little bit of a glitch there with the two players doing the exact same animation. So all or nothing for the spot kicks. Come on, you swans. Ref, where are you going, mate? We've got pens. You're going the wrong way, mate. <laughs> You're going the wrong way. So first man up is Martin Batarina, who is denied by Rushworth. And Coito will take out first. Now I'm going to go to the same corner here. I reckon to go in the same corner again, you know. Oh! Okay. Now, normally, I don't change the corner when I've scored, but this time, I will. Flamingo. Should have stuck to it. Saved. Mohamed Kudus. They're going to change this time. Oh, what a pen right in the far corner. And Brandon Vazquez, who's got us here courtesy of that late goal from the bench. Oh, rifles one in to put us back in front. Purvis Estupina. And saved by Rushworth. He saved freedom. And so, who had brought on for Jao Gomez from the injury can send us through the vet to see the Swans reach Wembley. Come on! Swansea City battle back from the brink to silence the London Stadium crowd and reach a second domestic cup final in two years. Oh my goodness, so much netted the winner, but give the credit to Carl, man, saving three or four spot kicks. And in the end, that's the main reason we made the final. Yeah, we love your soul, we love your vet. Great to see you get on the pitch and net the winner. But ultimately, that, that's Carl's shootout, that is. That's Carl's shootout. And it's why I often give him the captain's armband when Joe is not out there. So we'll set up a, a, a Burnley final against the championship side. I said before, Burnley's team is so good, it feels like a Premier League team. But even so, Burnley in the final and a chance for two domestic cups in two years. Come on, you swans, finally turning it round. And even more good news post-game as well. I say good news, a broken elbow isn't really good news, but it's, it's better than it could have been. As, uh, as Jao goes down for two months and it means that he will come back. Before the end of the season, he'll miss the cup final. He'll come back before the end of the season. So that's, uh, that's, that's still a big blow, to be fair. That means that he and Cam are both now down 
There is we're we'll missing two of our uh, our most important pieces for the uh, for the League Cup final. Right, uh, let's crack on and do one or two more today. We'll do uh, this one here, Leeds away at Ellen Road, and possibly we we'll squeeze it in the Leicester game in the league as well. Three wins on the trot for the Swans, finally starting to get it sorted. Now let's make the last 16 of the FA Cup. He's got another injury as well. Now Ethan Laird has gone down. But again, I, I know I said a few times, considering the amount of games we've had to play recently, a lot of fatigue, it, it does make sense. So I'm not mad at it at all as Jamal finds James. And Dan James, back at his old stomping ground, finds Vasquez who hits it in to the top corner. That's him to go in slow motion. But it's 2-2 two two for the American who's showing that with Cam down, he deserves a chance to start a lot more games ahead of Quita. James into the middle. I want to see how that went in. Did he miss hit it? Not really, he just seemed to go in slow motion. Not much power, but very accurate. Well, not the best of games, but wins are wins. Three 1-0s in four, but it's progress to round five. Swansea finally getting their form sorted after four wins on the trot. And it's the lead injury is also a three month one as well. I know it can feel a bit frustrating at times, but honestly, I recommend this to anyone who wants a more realistic and challenging uh, version of Karimo because when you're a team that's progressed to a point where you're going far in domestic cups and you're in Europe as well, chances are those teams are going to have quite a few injuries to deal with during the season. So I always recommend up those injury sliders. I'll, I'll show you my user sliders right now. They're on 77 for frequency and 53 for severity. Play around with it a little bit. Try and find your sweet spot. I normally find it's around here for me and around here for me. But uh, yeah, right now, was it 77 53? I think it was 77 53. This is, uh, this is quite a realistic rate of injuries for me, I would say. We've got three players currently down with uh, medium-term injuries in Cam, um, uh, Laird, and also Zhao Gomez as well. But again, for a team like ours, this is this is very realistic. And so as deadline day is here, just real briefly, we've got to show you this. Innocent Bam has come back from his loan spell at Real Salt Lake and now has that potential to be special. So I might just keep him for the rest of the season, to be fair, knowing that at the moment we've not got that much depth and we're getting the injuries as well. Um, do, I have, do I have enough time to promote a couple of the 18-year-olds in the academy and loan them out? I kind of want to do that with Theo. I'm going to gamble it. I'm going to promote Theo and add him to the loan list. The rest I'll keep in the academy because I'm sure that Theo will have the potential to be special and he needs to play. Oh, okay, exciting prospect. But he needs to play and uh, I don't want him to get a, a pro deal in the summer and then lose some potential. So I'll quickly add him to the loan list and fingers crossed in the nine hours we'll get him out on loan. Yep, there we go. Uh, Southampton, love the bid as well. I think it'll be first choice there at St. Mary's. And it's a good place for them to go as they like their young players. We'll delegate a two-year loan deal and try and loan them out. So, yeah, this is this is something I would recommend as well. I'm guilty of doing this. As many of you in the comments pick up on and criticise for me, and rightfully so as well. Uh, sorry, Lester and Leverkusen. You can loan them, but you can't buy them. Um, if you've got young players in your academy that are turning 18 or have turned 18, it's often a good idea to uh, promote them either midway through the season or at the start of the season and loan them out either in the summer or in January. Because if you promote them at the end of the season, the problem is, as Bournemouth put in a bit for Whitaker, which will turn down, the problem is the game will see them and see their stats at the end of the season as not played any games and they'll assume they're not very good and they'll downgrade their potential. When in reality, it's just because they've got a pro do at the end of the season when all the games have already been finished. So in that case, it's best to, to get them in your first team as soon as possible, either in the summer or right before January or in January and then loan them out. So that way they won't lose their potential. And after a few bids for Boz and Flamingo have been turned down, we do see the Sam Maras deal go through and he's going to join Southampton right now, competing for a playoff place in the championship for a couple of years at St. Mary's. Really like that deal. He'll beef up there on the South Coast and try and get the Saints back to the Premier League. I, I like that deal a lot. That makes a lot of sense, especially with their history of bringing through and developing young players as well. So that will do it then for deadline day. Uh, that will do it. No more deals to complete. We've got our young Greek lad loaned out and we shall leave it there. As you see for Fana, go from Lazio to Dortmund. And the top deals in total were Redondo to Roma for 64.8 mil. Pepe Lou moving within Spain to Atletico for 44.6 mil. And Alan Varela going to Molyneux as Gary O'Neill strengthens his charge for a European place. Yep, happy with that. Right, let's do one or two more and then we'll leave it there.
Yeah, I'll try and squeeze in a couple more today. Uh, following game, Leicester at home as we go for our fifth win in a row in all competitions. Come on, you swans. In fact, I might make this one my last game today. Just conscious of time. This tattoo's throw. Mine dropped to Koita. Goes up in the air and volleyed away just to nick a time. Come on, let's close out today's episode then with, uh, with five wins on the chart. Yusuf. Koita. Yes. Come on, Swansea. Let's make it five on the bounce to end today's episode. Koita, trusting him. He, he and Vazquez has got to fill the gap in Cam's absence. That's the second in the league for Koita. Most of his goals come away from the league, but his goal to game ratio is still pretty decent. Swans in front. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, well in, Jordan. Uh, if we get one chance for the break here, Koita's a Sinistera. He's got. Kanuna, who's got Koita, who's got Sinistera, who's got Osei Samuel to beat. He's also got Koita around the gap. Oh, what a ball! Koita off the post and off the back of Odysseus and turned behind for a corner. Almost the same goal he scored against Bolton. Deflecting off the woodwork and off the keeper into the back of the net. We'll take the corner though, last chance of the half. Tattoo whips one in. Denich's header! Swans are soaring high once again. Denic, I think his second goal since coming in. Swansea double up before the break. That's going to be Flamingos all day. Now then. Now then. Look at the green for Jordan Boz to run into. Coiters in the middle. Ah. Oh. Come on, Jordan. A bit more power on that through ball, if you don't mind, mate. That's going to be Flamingos. Oh, goodness. Flamingo has been solid at the back in this game. I say this a lot. I don't ordinarily include defensive highlights, but... Flamingo's won the ball back about four times in 58 minutes. And it might not sound like that much, but when you can see we're playing on three minute halves, that's impressive. Hasn't this place to pass? He's been solid. And as Sinistera finds Koita, he's got Kanuna with him, and this will wrap it up. Swansea finally are back in form. 3 0 in South Wales, and we'll close out with five on the bounce. Oh, no, 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 no. Ah. And that's the clean cheat gone, unfortunately. Well, we're going to get the win, but sadly, it won't be five on the trot for Carl and the boys in the back. Benjamin Sesco gets a goal back, but it will just be a consolation goal. No doubt about it. We're not, we're not going to throw this away from here. Yep, it's safe to say, after a tough spell of form, the Swans have got their groove back. Flying high on the table in the top four into the last 16 in the FA Cup. And, of course, we've got the Carrot final against Burnley that will be coming in the next episode. Dry spell? What dry spell? The swans are soaring. But that'll do it for today's episode of the RTG crew, guys. So big thank you for watching. We really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have enjoyed this episode, please drop a like. Most of you all have a fantastic day. And I'll see you for the next episode featuring that Carabao Cup final against Burnley at Wembley, going for our second major honour in two years very soon.